Welcome to Hartman Math. Today we're going to take a look at graphs of polar equations. To lead up to that, let's see if we can take this polar equation, change it back into rectangular form, meaning turn it into x's and or y's. Go ahead and pause the video here until you're done. See you in a bit. All right, we're going to multiply both sides by 1 plus sine theta first. And then we're going to go ahead and do our conversions. Remember, r squared is x squared plus y squared, so r has to be the square root of that. And then r sine theta, that's just y. So if we move this back over so that our square root is isolated, now we can square both sides. And then if we want to just put it in some sort of form that would kind of make sense, as we do have y squareds on both sides, it could cancel. If we got it equal to zero, that would be a standard form or general form of a conic section. And in particular, because it's got x squared, but no y squared, I think we're looking at a problem. This is lesson 10.8, graphs of polar equations. So we're going to take a look at a polar equation, r equals 2 times the cosine of theta. And since we really don't know what we're doing here, always a good idea to kind of do a table of values here. Uh, but remember, our polar coordinates are r and theta. So we're going to try out the thetas, see what the r's come out to be. So we'll uh, substitute in zero first. Cosine of zero is one times two is two. And we can plot that on a polar graph where theta is zero, r is positive two, two in that direction. All right, pi over six. Cosine of pi over six is uh, root three over two times two is root three. Decimal wise, that's about 1.7. So here, is pi over 6, and there's about 1.7 right there. So this is a half, and then one unit, uh, 1.7. All right, so pi over 3, cosine of pi over 3 is a half times 2 is 1. Here's pi over 3, and go one unit in that direction. Uh, pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, times 2 is 0. So anytime r is 0, we're talking about that's the origin. Let's continue. 2 pi over 3. Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half, times 2 is negative 1. So 2 pi over 3 is this way. Negative 1 means go the opposite direction, or here. 5 pi over 6, we would get negative root 3 over 2 times 2 is negative root 3. So 5 pi over 6 is here. Go the opposite direction, about 1.7 in that direction. Uh, pi, cosine of pi is negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So here's pi. Negative means go opposite two units. Ooh, we're right back here at that point. And I think we would see if we continue, we then start to land on the same points that we had. And we are looking at a circle. A circle that's not centered at the origin. We'll get back to that. But that's one way we can do it is just plotting points, making a table of values, uh, listing thetas, uh, substituting them in and getting the r's. All right, some special polar graphs to look at. Uh, we're going to start with uh, limicons. So if it is a plus or minus, one of the two, plus or minus b times cosine theta, or it could also be r, as long as we consider the a and the b to be positive numbers. You can get a limicon that looks like this. It's called the limicon with an inner loop. It's what happens, and this one would be cosine, and I know it's cosine because it, it is symmetric about the x-axis. If it's symmetric about the y-axis, it's going to be the sine variety. Uh, but anyways, if your a is less than b, so let's say we had 3 plus 
five cosine theta. Three over five is less than one. We get the Lemicon with an inner loop. If those values are equal, so let's say, again, this is the cosine variety, four plus four cosine theta, you get a cardioid. So it just kind of looks like a heart there. If the A over B is between one and two, we get a dimple limicon. So notice what's happening here, passes through the origin, pass, hits the origin, does not in this case. So uh, it's just kind of almost circular with one part just pushed in a little bit. So that would be something like uh, four plus three cosine theta, where four over three fits between one and two. And then if A divided by B is greater than or equal to two, uh, we get the convex limicon, so it's not quite pushed in uh, where there's an, a dent there. It's just kind of flat in that case. So that might be something like seven plus three cosine theta. All right, some other ones are rose curves. A rose curve has n number of petals when n is odd. So something like r is equal to uh, th uh, cosine three theta. When n is odd, it's gonna have that many petals. However, when n is even, so cosine four theta, it will have two times four number of petals, two times n, you can see it has eight petals. Okay? The distance from the origin to the tip of a petal is going to be given by the absolute value of A. That distance right there is going to tell you how far away from the center we are going to go. So cosine usually has one of the petals originally starting at the positive side of the x-axis. If we were thinking in terms of an x-axis, if A is negative, it does flip it across the other way. Sine is a little bit trickier to do. Um, it might be on the uh, one pedal on the y-axis, but notice this one doesn't have one on the y-axis because if it did, it would also have one on the x-axis. And you're going to see that uh, sine does not have one placed on the x-axis. So this is actually just in the middle of the quadrants on that. So sine's a lot trickier than cosine as we figure out where things go in our rows curves. And then the last couple are circles and lemniscates. We saw based on that first example that we did where we plotted the points and did the table of values, we saw a circle. Uh, notice that the circle that we had there was symmetric about the x-axis. So that is of this type, r equals a times cosine theta, which we had. If it was sine, it would be symmetric about the y-axis. Again, uh, here if a is positive, it would be over here if a had been negative, and so on. Uh, lemniscates gates are an equation that says r squared equals a squared, again, A is this distance right here, the distance to the tip of the figure eight. You kind of think of a lemniscate as a figure eight. And then it's uh, sine or cosine two times theta is the general form there. And then again, sine is going to go uh, this way and the diagonals quadrants one and three. Uh, cosine is gonna go on this one symmetric about x-axis, once again, cosine's the easier one to figure out where things are. All right, so example number five, let's sketch a rose curve. Let's see what's going on. We do have the easier variety, cosine, so we know that we're going to have a pedal, kind of that first pedal is going to be on the x-axis. Uh, since the n is four and that's even, we're going to double it and this is going to have eight pedals. They're going to be all equally spaced. And they're all going to be three away from the origin. So we can plot our first one, two, three. There's going to be one here. And then if they're all equally spaced, there's going to be one at the 45 degrees. 
90 and so on. There's going to be eight equally spaced petals. And then we could carefully uh, draw them in. Uh, and it's a little bit tricky because they don't actually overlap. essentially what the rose curve would look like. Example six, sketching a lemniscate. Remember, lemniscate is a figure eight. It's that R squared equation. This is A squared, so A would be two. Two away from the origin. Cosine the easy one on the x-axis, so two away and two away. You notice it does say the two theta, which is our form for a lemniscate. And now we just have a figure eight. And there's our lemniscate. Let's see about using a graphing calculator to do some polar graphs. We're going to do uh, two at the same time. We're going to do R1 and R2. We've got our functions there. So we're going to head over to the graphing calculator, see what that's going to generate. All right, we're going to go to mode first, press mode. And we're going to make sure that we're in radians. And then we're going to choose polar, P-O-L, not function, not parametric, P-O-L for polar. And then go to the Y equals button. So now you're going to see R1 equals, R2 equals, and so on. So we have these. These are our two functions you want to type in. Before we graph, let's take a look at our window. Press window next after you've got those. So for our polar, you're going to see a theta min and a theta max. Usually we want to go with 0 to 2 pi, pretty typical uh, step. Usually just leave that the way it is. Step just means how often, how frequent does it make the calculation. So if your step is too big, uh, you might not have nice curves. It might be these jagged, uh, straight, kind of connected sides instead. But I do want to change the, uh, the x min and so on. So we're going to change this uh, x min to change it to negative 8, to positive 8. And I don't want a bunch of marks on the axis, so I'm going to have the scale be 8. Same thing here, negative 8 to 8 by 8. We are now ready to graph. see it's graphed both of them it's graphed the rose curve and then it's graphed the circle and we have a sand dollar if you've been at the beach all right so let's do another one definitely a little harder to uh, put this input this into the calculator give it your best shot this is our function r1 equals Careful with the parentheses, especially here. The fifth power needs to apply to all of this. Here are going to be our window settings. So go ahead and pause the video here as you input that in. Hit graph once you're done with the window. See what you get. All right, let's give it a try. And you are looking at what is known as the butterfly curve. If you want to explore some other uh, graphs, the polar graphs on your graphing calculator, 
Here are some interesting ones with the settings. Just kind of play with it, see what you get. And that's going to be it not only for this lesson, but the pre-calculus course. I hope you've had as much fun as I have. I will see you next time.